I'm really excited about this because we get calls all the time about what can we do? What should I do? And I've told you during the regular Tuesday tips that Mary Ross, I thought she was going to join us today, but she wasn't able to. But she had some things out there that will help you in writing your policies and procedures. And all you have to do is go on her website. She's so sweet. She's giving them to you free. Um, also, we want, we're going to start off by asking a couple of questions. Now, this is my take on it. And you all know that we like interaction here. So if you want to say something, just unmute yourself and say it. But I don't think that we'll ever be on a lockdown, lockdown like we were before. At least I'm praying that we won't. However, it's just like anything else, we have to be prepared. So we're going to ask you a couple of questions. Number one, are you prepared for another lockdown? Just vote on your computers. But it is a definite fact that we do have a new norm. And that's why our guests are with us today. They are outstanding in the industry and they have some tips that they'd like to share. I have a lot of mom and pops. And when I say mom and pops, no disrespect intended, but I have a lot of people who have small companies. It's just the owner of the company or the owner and the manager, and they're always looking and seeking help. So my guests today are helping me help them, and I really do appreciate it. Um, the question is up, are you prepared for another lockdown? 61% say yes, 39% say no. Those of you who are saying no, can anybody tell me what you're missing? Why aren't you? Good morning, Miss Vicki. Good morning. Uh, this is Angela. Um, Angela, what do you need to help you if you told it no? Kind of in between yes and no. Um, no being no reason. One reason I said no is because I'm just remembering when we when we had the lockdown last year of just processes um, being able having to come into the office, um, send paperwork out. So we're in the process now of possibly um, having certifications uh, performed through our um, current software Yardy. So that's why I said on the lines of no because we were having to still come into the office to do certain things and I say no because if we had the capability to do online certifications it would be a whole lot easier but then too you think about another barrier is people who are not tech savvy to actually upload the documents that we need so that's another thing. So it's like, how can you eliminate it? Can I go 100% online certifications, knowing that I have some who are not tech savvy? Well, uh, does anybody have any suggestions for Angela? I'm going to suggest that you're always going to have your seniors who are not really mm -hmm. tech savvy. Mm -hmm. You're always going to have to have a simple instruction book. Someone told me the other day that I like your instructions for your training because they're plain and simple. Now, I didn't know how to take that. I didn't know whether they were too simple or whether they were thinking that I was simple, you know? I said, but does it work for you? And she says, yes. I said, well, then I'll take it in a good way. So uh, you're still gonna have to look out for those people because their certifications are gonna have to be processed also. The millenniums, uh, millennials, the young people, the people who are high tech, who are on their phones and just every day, you know, you never see their hands. You always see a phone. Those people you won't have trouble with. But your seniors and those people who I would say um, post 90s will have trouble. So you're going to have to make a way for them, even if it's for those particular people, those who want to come in can come in. Those who want to do it online can do it online. You still need to make a way for them. Does anybody else have any comments for Angela? And thank you, Angela. That's a, a good thing. We were at the uh, Mid-Atlantic, no, we were at the SAMA, the regional SAMA, and they were talking about taking rent over the internet and things of that nature. Well, it will pose a problem for some people. So that's a good one. Anybody else? 
that's one of the things that maybe our uh, guests will address today. I'll tell you how they're doing it. I can tell you um, one of the things that we implemented, um, we would get the paperwork together, like the AR package together. We would put it in an envelope. We would deliver it to the resident's door. Um, the resident would pick it up, you know, outside the office, take it home. Then we would make an appointment and we would do the phone interview with the resident and go through the paperwork with them, ask them the questions like we normally would do in the office, um, have them sign everything, put it back in the envelope and return it. Um, that way we could gather the verifications, you know, without the direct contact. We would work up the AR and then have them come into the office, um, obviously wearing PPE, um, you know, manager and everything. And we, we could do recertifications that way. Um, and you would limit the number of people in your office and the time that you're, you have direct contact with someone. And that was, that was very successful for us. And that might work for the people who aren't tech savvy. Okay. Our next polling question, Ebony, thank you, Jennifer. Jennifer's one of our guests today, and so is Linda. Let's see if we can get Linda to the top, Ebony, so we can see her. Linda. Linda's, Linda's having trouble getting in this morning. Uh, Larry is working with her to okay. get her in. Okay. Okay, here's our next poll. Wait, nope, that's the wrong one. No, this is the right one. There you go. Do <laughs> you have some people live with technicality? <laughs> so this question says, have you changed your house rules due to the pandemic? And some of, what are some of the things that you would change in the house rules? Um, just to give oh, you- Hold on. Uh, Sorry. Here we go. Thank you for sending that to me. <laughs> Tahesa. Okay. Um, one of the things, and I guess you all can chime in and let us know what you've done. One of the things is we had a property in Connecticut and uh, it was an elderly property. The lady went to stay with her children during the pandemic so she could be close to them. It ended up something like about eight months. Management wanted to um, serve her with a notice because she had been gone too long. So we had to get HUD involved. And HUD asked them what was in their policy about extenuating circumstances or absences and what the difference between an absence and an abandonment is. Uh, where she made her mistake was that none of the neighbors saw her. And any of you who have elderly properties, you know they look out for one another. So they ended up, um, they ended up telling her to um, management that they had not seen her. So management was looking for her all over everywhere. No idea where she was. So finally they called the emergency number. Hi Linda. Hey, good morning. Good morning. They called the emergency number and it comes to find out that she had go, gone to stay with her kids. And so one of the things that they said that they wrote into their policy for the pandemic and into the house rules, if you have to be gone due to a uh, presidential disaster or an emergency such as a pandemic, let the office know. It didn't dawn on her to let the office know. She just knew her kids were coming together and she was gone. So that's something that you might want to think about. In another case, one of the um, residents had to go into a nursing home facility after leaving the hospital and she was gone quite a time. And when I say quite a long time, it was like a year and a half and HUD got involved in that one. And uh, the manager was right to the point that she felt that they, HUD was paying subsidy on a unit that no one was living in. And you know, we don't want to do that. But HUD came back around um, and said that her doctor had to release her from this facility. So they kept her unit 
for her an additional three months until the doctor released her. So sometimes you have extenuating circumstances and sometimes you can be prepared for them and sometimes you can't. Does anybody else have anything that they want to say about that? Has anybody written anything into their policy about um, your residents leaving during the pandemic, how long they can be gone? Do they have to notify you every two months, every other month, anything like that? Okay. All right. So we'll take the next one before we turn it out over to our guests. That is something I urge you all to think about though. Has your property hosted any of the following for your residents or staff? I must say that the affordable housing managers have been very proactive. A lot of them have had testing clinics. Uh, they've had the vaccine clinics. Um, they've had a combination of both. Some have used the um, properties then to transport people to testing sites and things of that nature. Okay, it seems that 5% uh, have done a testing clinic, 33% has have done a vaccine clinic, and um, about 18% of you have done both and 43%, we're, we haven't done anything. We're just hoping they go, okay? So those of you who have participated in a clinic or whether it's testing or vaccine, how did that work for you? You guys are so shy. It, <laughs> Vicki, with, with us, with our clinics, um, the uh, actually what happened if it was an elderly property they came out our family properties we've had very little success having clinics that are I mean having the the companies come out to do the the vaccine um, however what it was just interesting because the, the first go round um, we, we had to have three different uh, shots because the first time people wanted to wait and see and then once they got they, they saw that people were actually getting their vaccine um, and it worked. Then they, they got their first shot on the second vaccine. And so, with, so anyway, but it, it worked great. And we have a high percentage of, our, of those sites that are vaccinated. Well, that's great. That's great. Larry, uh, I'm kind of like you. Most of the ones that I've talked to, the family properties don't come out. It's the elderly properties that do. Mm-hmm. That's true. Now, you know what's amazing to me? That when they start paying $100, giving football tickets and things like that, it increased. Hey, Vicki, we have a comment from Kim Blow, and she says, NNRHA registered seniors and transported them to vaccination clinics and also hosted several clinics. Kim, would you like to comment on that? No? Okay. And yesterday I got an email from uh, Margie from the Greater Bridgeport Jewish Housing Corporation. She couldn't make it today, but she says that they've done COVID testing with the Hartford Healthcare and they've been doing that monthly until they had a clinic to provide the vaccine to those who signed up. They tried to have a flu clinic, flu shot clinic last week but CVS didn't show up. So that was unfortunate but then, for them. But she says their service coordinator has worked closely with Hartford Healthcare on the COVID testing and the Pfizer vaccines. And residents gave written permission to be tested and the results were kept private. But they do have flu clinics every fall. Just didn't get to have one last week. Who else to you all who have participated in the vaccine clinics or the testing clinics? whether it was holding them at your site or whether it was providing transportation for them. That's a great thing. Um, when it first started, we used to have a lot of elderly people that would call in and they just despise masks. 
Did you all go through that at your properties? They just despise masks. I don't care if they were free at the door with the hand sanitizer. I'm not wearing it. And uh, one gentleman called, they can't make me wear it. I said, well, is it in their policies and procedures? Is it in the rules that support the lease? Is it in their house rules? And uh, they said, no, it's not in the house rules. I think it was Ian, Jennifer. So I told Ian, I said, well, Ian, you need to have, at least in the common area, if you want to, to wear a mask, you need to have that in the house rules, that during pandemics or emergencies that we have to have people to mask. And then if they don't follow the house rules, they get a lease violation. But you know, that brings about a whole new thing when you watch the educators on the news now, and they feel that they shouldn't be made to do anything. But you want to keep your property safe. We want to keep everybody on the property safe. So we have decent, safe, and sanitary housing. Anybody else have a comment on that? Okay, here's our, our final poll. Is this our final one, Ebony? Okay, it and then we'll turn it over to our guest. All right, so do you have updated contact information for all your residents? Okay. <clears throat> now we're not talking about the 92006. <laughs> it goes with the application as to who to call when something happens. I mean, do you have a way of contacting them? I was going to do a leading age conference training. And of course, you know, Ida hit New Orleans and they discovered that they didn't have this. We had talked about some of the things previously. They had contact, emergency contact information, this one property did, but they did not have cell phone numbers for their residents. The majority of your residents have cell phones. And I would think it would be great to have a cell phone list so that you can let them know where to go, what to do, so that you can contact them and stay in communications. Communication is important. They say communication is important in all relationships, right? Um, whether it's a husband, wife, whether it's a young couple in love. Well, communication is important in housing also. We need to be able to reach them. And from what I see here, you all do. 85% say yes, that's great. That's great. Because my kids don't leave home without a cell phone. Now I've left mine this morning, right? But my kids don't leave home without their cell phones. So a lot of our residents don't leave home without their cell phones either. So that's real important. You can text them, you can email them, and you can call them. Well, thank you for participating in the polls. I'm really impressed with this last one. I'm glad that you all are staying updated. So we will allow Linda, I'm gonna mute my mic. We will allow Linda and Jennifer to give us some tips from their companies on some of the things to do. Um, we will take Linda first. Hi, good morning. Good morning, how are you? Good. Well, thank, thank you for inviting me. Uh, this is a privilege and I don't take it lightly. Um, my goal is to just kind of talk about the new norm. And I'm not sure that anyone knows what the new norm is. Uh, uh, there's a lot of different things that are coming at everybody at a quick pace. So each company probably will be adapting different things based on e different things for the company wide and different things for each particular site. Uh, and looking at and talking to people in the industry on both the multifamily and the commercial side, I mean, we're entering a digital society, intelligent and smart machines. And so uh, everyone has to be prepared and get ready. Uh, if we look at, you know, what happened in the school system and everyone had to actually work from home, uh, kids were schooling from home, and then they found out that, I don't think it was new, I think it was just something that was brought to light of how so many rural communities and, and people that may not as be as fortunate were already behind. And so with COVID, 
in 2020 and, and even 2021, the need, uh, the need for electronics, the pace has been, it was already fast. You know how fast they tell you, you buy a new cell phone and then four months later that cell phone is old. Well, because of COVID, everyone inside, everyone working from home and all those new norms, uh, the intelligent and digital society is, is, is really climbing at a, at, a, at, a, at a high speed. And a lot of people are not ready for it. I mean, we're talking and I've read articles about virtual drug screening and there's thoughts and considerations related to marijuana screening, if, if in fact they will even do those anymore. Uh, they've talked about remote control fobs, motion sensor door hardware, because uh, we're coming into a touchless society. No laying hands on anybody, you know, everybody, the social distancing, and it'll be something that will be a part of the norm for a long time, if not forever. Remote door locks, cell phone lock applications, um, a lot of new office design changes. And one of the things that caught my attention, well, all of them did, but uh, design of a stress relief area for employees, like outside fresh air or something where they can go out and kind of rejuvenate themselves. But, you know, it's a virtual, digital society and people working from home for instance that may be a permanent thing a lot of people are rethinking that and may do away with a lot of commercial office buildings and so forth but you know it brings additional challenges because working from home has already increased cyber attacks because they're not Fit, they're not properly set up at home, but it's going to, we're in a physical and manual skills. Those things are kind of out the door now. It's just push button, push button. I remember just recently this weekend, I mentioned to my son about something about the yard and I said, nobody wants to do hard labor. And he actually just went over and he hit the button on the remote and he hit the button on the refrigerator and he hit the button on something else. He said, we don't have to anymore. It's all easy. So there's nothing, no real skills involved unless you are uh, keeping up and, and keeping with uh, what's going on in the digital and electronic society. You know, I... Um, I won't, won't say anything about my age, but I tend to have to go to my 10-year-old grandson and say, Caleb, can you fix this? And can you show me this on, <laughs> on my computer and my laptop? And he'll look like, okay, you didn't know that. So that's the society we're in. And if we don't keep up with it, if we don't keep up with it, and if we don't transform, this is it's considered to be like a a year of transition. And so the smart systems, the uh, uh, safer, just being safe, being flexible in the workplace, uh, a lot of the stuff that will be permanent. Um, I know at Tesco, we're looking at the, you know, the digital signatures. And I know a lot of the software providers are working on that. And I'm sure Navigate, you're, um, you're kind of in line with that and kind of know what's happening. But you, if you, we as an industry, we as a people in this industry, to keep up with what's going on, we've got to be tech savvy. You're going to have to be tech savvy. So we talk about, like I was just talking about the rural areas and all of the children and all of the parents that were left out the transition when they had to do schooling at home, just think, and they were already behind. So think about how grossly behind they will be now as, and as fast paced as this is, is going to occur. I just heard the news before I left my hotel that uh, 2035, they expect for all cars to be electric and, and no gas at all. So that gives you an idea of how fast, I mean, things were going. So we just, we have to reconfigure fundamentals and the realities or you know most of this stuff is here to stay and we have to 
I don't even think we can just gradually kind of do it because the pace is going to be so fast. Um, you're talking about telecare, I mean, screening and medical things, you know, you go into the doctor and they're using, I just read this, a smart millimeter wave machine, <laughs> you know, scan your body and see what's going on. So everything is just, I mean, think touchless, not getting close and just speech and facial recognition instead of um, signing in and, you know, payroll stuff and all those different things and entering the building. And virtual schooling, a lot of people think that that's one of the things that will be here. And, it, and so we as a society and as an industry just have to look at it differently, keep pace. I mean, we're going to be lost. The pace is there. So we just have to do and, and decide and make, make changes. And a lot of people may not be ready for them, but we have to get ready because they're going to come. That's very true, Linda. Thank you mm -hmm. for uh, yeah. putting notes. Um, I agree with you that um, we're going to have to roll with the punches. My word for 2020 during the pandemic was forward. I just saw myself pushing forward. We're going to have to go forward as an industry. Also, um, I like your uh, idea about the office design. That's true. I had uh, a lady that called me that said, I just don't want the residents in my office, what can I do? And I asked her how our office was set up. She said, well, there's a door and they come in usually to sign. I told her, I thought about a Dutch door. Do you all remember the old Dutch doors? You can open the top or you could open the bottom. Right. Open right. The yeah. and I told her that maybe she should put up a Dutch door and maybe some plexiglass if she did not find another way for her residents to come in and sign the uh, papers. I have another lady that said that she ordered on the little printing thing that Ebony orders our stuff for, the little imprint, you know how they send you sample ink pens and things? Mm -hmm. that her residents all get new pens now. And when they bring their pen back to sign, their own pen back to sign, they get a chance to get a piece of candy or something out of the, the candy jar, the snack jar. Not only do we have tech savvy, but we're going to be creative. And that's been the hardest thing for me as a trainer is how can I incorporate fun into a Zoom? You know, how can I do that? So Evan and I came up with a little prize wheel for one of our trainings, but we're going to have to be creative. And I ask you to share those creative ideas that you have. Another thing you talked about, Linda, was um, the kids and the phones. Well, you know, I bought some Apple stock, right? I want Apple to do well. I was glad when they came out with the 15 until I updated my phone and can't understand anything to do with it. So <laughs> I do understand. I'm going to have to take a couple of classes. My kid says, Mama, they have classes over at the Apple store for free. You should go over there while they're still open because they're going to be closed for a while. Um, so we appreciate you for that. The fobs, the uh, touchless um, security doors. Now, let me just ask you this. When we were talking in Jacksonville, how many people provide Wi-Fi services on their property? And Larry, you might be able to help me with this. Um, is it true that there might be some type of incentive for properties who are offering Wi-Fi to their residents? So the, the cool thing right now, well, I'll tell you, uh, it's pretty easy for offices to offer Wi-Fi or to, to offer Wi-Fi in your office. You know, that, that the technology is there. That's, that's pretty simple. Uh, the, the problem is when you try to offer it site-wide and we do have a few properties that, that have that capability. It's very expensive. And, and frankly, it's not the, it's not the fastest. It just doesn't seem like it's, it's right. real. It, it just doesn't seem to work great. However, um, most companies right now that are offering internet services are offering very um, great deals for uh, low-income residents. And so we have a, we had a fact sheet that we sent out to all of our, our residents 
and um, I don't know what the cost was, but it, it's way uh, cheap. <laughs> and so, especially especially with with kids having to do virtual school, you know, they need a safe place to work and a and a uh, a place that has good internet. And so, the internet service providers were stepping up, and then uh, there were also some hardware providers that were that were providing discounted laptops and school systems that were doing the same. So I've seen some of those. <clears throat> so those are things that you can think about, especially if you have a family property. Usually if you have a senior property, as Larry was saying, they can come down to the community room, common area. And that's something else that maybe Jennifer will cover. How do you do your common era, area? Do you have, like one lady says that they go by floors. They have five floors and the first floor can come in on this day. The second floor can come in on that day and those type of things. And I applaud them because you, you really going to have to think outside the box. That's just, that's just all it is to it in order to be successful and not to put so much burden on the regional managers and the site managers and the maintenance man. We're going to have to think outside of the box. So we have a poll up. How many of you uh, offer internet? Okay. All right. That's great. And um, you might want to check with your local office depot stores and staples. Sometimes they have funds that they use to contribute to communities and community efforts also. Um, we should also mention the broadband benefits that are available right now um, with the discounts, the FCC discounts. We actually have some information on our website and I'll post that link okay. for everybody. That sounds like a winner. Miss Jennifer, how are you today? I am doing well. Thank you for having me. Oh, thank you both for being here. And you too, Larry. <laughs> so Jennifer, tell us about some of the things that you guys are doing. Okay. So, you know, March 2020, last year, COVID hit. Everything came to an abrupt halt. Um, you know, everything closed. Um, we closed community rooms. Uh, we limited... Um, interaction with the residents, you know, offices were closed, appointment only type deal. Um, so once things started to, the cases started to go down um, and we started to lessen, you know, quote unquote restrictions that we had um, because we have quite a number of elderly high rises. Um, a lot of those residents were, were going stir crazy. So I just wanted to talk a little bit today about how we have adapted, um, you know, to this new norm, the new way of social distancing and cleaning that we are obviously going to have to maintain for a while. So um, during the period when the numbers were down, we, we did open our community rooms back up, uh, limited number of people um, when the weather was nice and the property allowed for us to move um, things outside, we did that. Uh, we took tables, you know, chairs, umbrellas outside. So we, there was open air, more room for them to, to get around. Um, in Florida, we have just recently closed our, our indoor um, community rooms again and all of our elderly high rises. Um, we are continuously, we, we have kept the maintenance schedule of cleaning the common areas. So those are cleaned two to three times a day. Um, the hand railings, the laundry rooms, the elevators, um, in, in buildings where we could um, purchase the cleaning machines, we have done those, the ultraviolet cleaning machines, um, the oxidizing machines, um, we use those in the elevators, common areas as well. And I know you can't do that on every property. Obviously, every property doesn't have those, but those have been successful. Um, 
our service coordinators have been wonderful in uh, keeping constant communication with the residents. Um, they have facilitated all the vaccination clinics that we've held. Um, so again, like Larry was saying, when we first started, some of the residents were hesitant. Um, when they seen it was working, they would sign up. Um, so we've continued to have those throughout the year. Um, we are now starting to do the, the third booster shot clinics. And if they have not received their first and second vaccination, obviously they can get it, you know, now. Um, and we've had actually a lot of residents that did not, that opted out of getting the vaccine actually ask, hey, are they coming back out? Um, so that's been very successful for us. Um, obviously we highly encourage all the residents to wear a mask when they're in the elevator or, you know, in the hallways. Um, in those high rise buildings specifically, we are highly encouraging, we can't restrict obviously um, visitors, guests, but we are highly encouraging only essential visitors, guests for food deliveries, medicine, et cetera. Um, and, and they've been pretty cooperative with that. Let's see, maintenance and managers, we. We are um, back on site 100%. Um, we are doing unit inspections. Um, we are wearing full PPE, masks, gloves when going into the units, um, asking before we enter um, if anyone is sick, um, which is you know something that we've, we've been doing for a while. Um, we have signs all over the property asking for social distancing, limiting the number of, of residents in the laundry room, the elevators. Um, and that's kind of our new norm. Um, our offices are open. In some, some properties, we are still doing the AR paperwork via the envelope into the door um, in resident interviews over the phone. Um, but in offices where we have um, space and we, have installed the plexiglass barriers um, between the residents and the managers. Um, those offices are open. Okay. Well, thank you, Jennifer. Um, I, I like that. You mentioned unit inspections. Uh, guys, I think that's something that if you didn't do, you know, HUD didn't give us any guidance at first. They didn't say to stop doing your annual inspections. So if you have not done an annual inspection since 2020, it's time for you to do one now. I was looking on LinkedIn and I wouldn't call the gentleman's name if I could remember it, but I really don't remember it. He had this big blowout about doing REACT inspections and how REACT has started that. But um, I wanted to tell him, you should see some of the pictures that Claudia Rodriguez and I get from the properties on how they're doing. Everybody is not a good landlord. So REACT has to go out to make sure that the properties are being kept in what? Decent, safe, and sanitary conditions. And uh, at the end of October, we have this young lady uh, from California that's gonna talk to us about the INSPIRE inspections or, and the regular REACT inspections. We don't know when they will convert, but uh, Larry's pretty good at that too. We might invite him back. But um, I also, Jennifer, had you to say something about uh, the common areas in the community rooms and you're closing them. What are you guys doing about the laundry rooms? Do you assign times? Now, I know I talked with a young lady yesterday and uh, I don't know whether she's on. She told me she was going to be shy and she wasn't going to say anything, but they have designated times for floors for the laundry room. And the people have to sign in and out. So if the clothes are left, they'll know who did not come back to pick up their clothes out of the machine. Jennifer, what did you all do about the uh, laundry facility? Because all units don't have a wash and dryer connections. Right. Um, yeah, as far as I know, we were just limiting, you know, limiting the number of people um, with signs and, you know, the maintenance, because um, 
during that period, the maintenance was not necessarily going in and out of units unless it was an emergency, right? Um, so we use them to clean and kind of help monitor those areas as well. Um, but I think that's a great idea, um, especially in a high rise, you know, uh, maybe, you know, by floors, um, mm -hmm. assigning, you know, days or, or something by floors and the sign in and out times. I think that's a, a wonderful idea. It's something I, I wrote down and I wanted to add, this is not about laundry rooms, but Miriam and I were talking this morning and, um, so the service coordinators um, in Florida, uh, and I just heard this, we're doing a hall bingo. Since all the community rooms are closed, they are, um, so the residents open their door and they sit, you know, right in their door at the hallway and they're, they're playing bingo. They're socially distancing playing bingo. And I thought that was an awesome thing to share. Awesome thing. That is an awesome thing, which was bringing me to my next question for everybody, um, which is mental health. I have heard more about mental health in the last three months than I think I've had, in, and I'm like, I'm not going to tell my age, but I think I have in all of my age. Um, and I could see that as being a stress reliever to play bingo in the in the hall. Another uh, property has an intercom system, and you know they have to be an old property to still have the intercom system. But they pull numbers, and um, for the unit numbers on the outside of their senior citizen building, they pull the unit numbers for prizes, and they get the prizes donated by, she said, Dollar General, the Dollar Store, and different people who have things that they can afford to write off and discard. I thought that was a great way to relieve the stress. Now, young people are going to stay in contact because we mm -hmm. know that they're all on social media. It's yeah. our that we have to worry about you know have they talked to anyone today how can you talk to them and the lady from Connecticut that Ebony wrote uh, read the things that they were doing they also are getting prepared for Halloween right now everybody doesn't celebrate Halloween but they're giving little treats to all of the people and just knocking on the doors not going in or tying the things on the door and they also had last Thanksgiving they had one of the little local bakeries to bake the little small pan uh, pound cakes with not too much sugar she said and they gave that to the residents for uh, Thanksgiving so again we, we're gonna have to be creative uh, I've asked Lisa because I can't get any feedback from most of you if we could start buying prizes to give away on Tuesday tips for the people who participate in the conversation and she says yes they can do that even find some games to do with them so uh that will be coming and we're going to see who will talk then <laughs> <laughs> um so um, did anybody else get any good ideas or have anything that you want to share? I wrote down quite a lot from Linda and Jennifer. Anybody else? Now, some of you have family properties, some of you have elderly properties, and some of you have a combination. We even have some rad conversion zone um, that are affiliated with public housing. Nobody has anything else to say. Talk to me, people. Talk to me. Did you enjoy the session today? Have you enjoyed hearing from people on what they did? You can unmute yourself and say yes or raise your hand in a poll or something. <laughs> I think it's great. Yes. I think it's great to hear from other people because um, you know, we're all in the same industry, but this is probably the one time that I've seen that we are all dealing with exactly the same thing. Mm -hmm. When I talk, when I talk to my colleagues, I mean, mm -hmm. in, across the country, it's, it's, it, we're all dealing with the exact same thing. And that's an unusual um, situation. And I want to learn from what other people are doing. You know, I, I clearly don't want to uh, reinvent the wheel or have all the answers, but I think it's great to hear from, from others. Okay, I think it's. We have a raised hand. Oh, you do? 
Yes. Who was that? I just clicked on your Luana. Phone. Okay. Hey, Luana, you want to show your face? Well, I'm not sure exactly how. If you look in the bottom left hand corner, yes, show a camera, click on it if it has the red X in it. It's like a little video camera. I don't see a camera, I see video and mute. Well, click on video. Video. Mm -hmm. Okay. Hey, <laughs> there you now you can see me. Okay, great. What I wanted to share was I have a senior property and I definitely seen from the very beginning um, the depression that was going on for not having activities because we have a lot of them. And so I, I kind of invented, I kind of got tickled by uh, the person that's over me when they did my evaluation said that I invented social distance bingo, but it has been a wonderful thing for our property. What I did was I bought the paper uh, bingo and I do the tokens, but I keep a list. We have 50 seniors, so I'm a small property. But what I do every week is I put up a sign-in sheet and I maybe have 18 or 19 that play. And so I divide it up into two days, Tuesday and Thursday, mm -hmm. and they know the dates that they're going to play. And believe me, that has been our saving grace. Oh, I cool. also allowed a couple of the home health agencies that did bingo, I did the same with them. So they have once a month that they have some people that come in to do bingo, and I just switch the month. It's something to look forward to. We oh, clean no. up afterwards. It, it's been really good for us. You all get prizes? Yes, absolutely. What type of prizes do you have? Well, we keep the dollar store in business here in Long Oak. <laughs> we have all kinds of good stuff. Now, the people that come from outside, they give better prizes than my dollar store prizes. But I always try to pick up stuff at different Dollar Trees when mm -hmm. I'm out and about because a lot of them have different things. They do. Yes. They do. Well, that's great. Thank you for sharing that with us. Anybody else doing anything else? Anything differently? Well, guys, I just want to say I thought uh, that I would have a uh, professional here today on mental health but uh, he was unable to make it. But it is a serious thing. And if you just think about us and we're able to, to move, to get about and what have you, and you think about your seniors who just look at the four walls all the time, um, let's be creative. Let's, let, let's do some things for them. I'm gonna look for some things that I could share with you. And we want, we want to keep that mind alert and working as long as we can. I have, um, since I've been challenged by Lisa and told that I could have some money to buy some things, I have some little things, um, some little games and things that you'll see. It's gonna be a sheet of paper. Uh, it might have a, um, a C over uh, some army men, meaning uh, the income for military, military income, and, and things of that nature that will relate to our industry. I just, I just think that it would behoove us to stay alert, to share, to talk, and to move forward. We have to move forward. And uh, I'm not one really for a whole lot of change that has been a part of that that part that I don't like about me, you know, but this has made me change. We really have to change. I had a lady that called um, yesterday and wanted to know if I could do an in-person training. I said, I would love to if they'll let me come, but you know, the powers that be tells me I'm still going to have to do them virtually. So I'm going to have to find something. And bingo, is one of the easiest things that you can do. I did a bingo training that was virtual and 
when you hear a certain word, there were certain words on the bingo card, you'd have to mark that word. If it was 92006, or if it was uh, existing tenant search, while we were talking or discussing those chapters in the 4350. And we had several people that Ebony uh, helped. We had several people that did bingo with us. And if you all can think of something else, let me know, because I'm desperately wanting something for training to keep me from going out there and getting fired. Larry, you got any openings at your place? Because I just cannot stand being locked in. I just I don't like it. So I can imagine what the seniors are doing when they only have that space that they're in. You know, one little lady told me, well, I ride up and down the elevator. They told me I was gonna have to stop so somebody else could ride the elevator. But she says she rides up in the elevator and she just peeks out to see if anybody else is out. And I can understand that, that you know, resonated with me, especially if you are a people person. Now, my husband has no problem. It could be nobody in the world but him. But I'm a people person, and I like to get out and to meet people. Well, that brings us to a close for today. Does anyone have anything else they want to say? Everything's going well at your property. No problems. Well, we're glad of that. I want to thank our special guests, Jennifer Scott and Linda Mills McLean and Larry Sisson. Thank you all so much for being with us today. You have a lot to think about and a lot to concentrate on. These are my notes. I wrote good notes. Thank you all and we'll see you next Tuesday for another Tuesday tip. And don't forget we'll have a live session at the end of October on React. So she wanted to know if you had questions or if there was something that you wanted her to address. Now you all address the questions to me and I'm sure Larry gets a lot of questions also, but we need to address them to the professionals. So if you'll send them in to Ebony, we'll add them to her list and she'll address your concerns and your questions. Thank you. And y'all have a great day. Thank and you. Without a smile, give them one of yours. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.